Hello to everyone in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral community and all of our friends. This is Father Jonathan. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to continue our series on the lives of the saints. And on this, the 29th of April, we celebrate the memory of our Holy Father Basil, Bishop of Ostrog. Our Holy Father Basil was born in 1610 of poor but deeply devout parents in the village of Merkonich in Herzegovina. His first school of piety was his parents' home, where the things of God were of more importance than earthly and fleeting cares. And the second, in which his soul was able to satisfy its spiritual aspirations, was regular attendance at the divine liturgy, to which personal prayer and solitude was added. When he entered a church prostrating deeply to the ground and devoutly kissing it, he followed the divine liturgy motionless and with fear, as though he stood before the throne of God. Although he was very poor, he always shared his bread with other boys who went with him to keep the sheep. To escape the malign influence of those neighbors who had apostatized from the Christian faith and converted to Islam, his parents sent him to finish his education in the monastery of Zavala, of which his uncle was the abbot. Avidly reading the writings of the Holy Fathers, his heart burned for the ascetic life, and he decided to become a monk. He was tonsured in the monastery of Tzvordosh, and for a time later was ordained deacon and then priest. He was then called to serve with Metropolitan Madarias of Tsetsinye. It was at this time when the Serbs were oppressed under the Turkish yoke, the Orthodox faith was also endangered by the propaganda of the Jesuits who were seeking to convert them to Catholicism. St. Basil came to the Metro Metropolitan's attention in connection with this cunning propaganda and the need to defend Orthodoxy. But the latter was indifferent and falsely accused him in front of the people. These columnies, columnies found no echo because of the Christians had full confidence in St. Basil, whose way of life was radiant was a radiant testimony to the truth. On his return to Sverdosh, the saint traveled round the villages holding services and exhorting the people to keep the faith as the most precious possession. This apostolic work stirred up against Basil the hatred of those who had become Muslims. In the end, they attempted to kill him. To escape this danger, the saint was forced to flee to Russia. He even retur he returned home sometime later with a great many books and liturgical messments. But he was discovered, but it was he discovered that the hatred of the Muslims and the Uniates towards him had in no way abated, and he had to leave again, this time on a pilgrimage to Mount Athos. On his return, he passed through Peck, where Paisius, the Serbian patriarch, consecrated him bishop and named him Metropolitan of Trebinje. The Metropolitan of Herzegovina, being assassinated shortly afterwards by the Turks, St. Basil was appointed to succeed him. Turkish oppression was, at that time, redoubling against the Serbian people. Churches, monasteries, and houses were sacked, and the whole country was mercilessly devastated. The holy bishop had once more to take fight. He found refuge in the monastery of Ostrog and settled in the cave that had been occupied by the holy abbot Isaiah. From this retreat, he directed his diocese for 15 years, guiding himself by prayer and lengthy nocturnal intercessions before God. He sometimes left the monastery to visit the afflicted people, sympathizing with their sufferings and strengthening them in hope. Many there were who benefited from the miraculous power of his prayer and who already venerated him as a saint. During the great waves of persecution, people went in crowds to Ostrog to receive spiritual and bodily comfort from the holy bishop. St. Basil had, in addition, to confront the malice of certain Orthodox, like the Prince of Rayik, 
and his sons, who, inspired by the demon, caused great harm to the monastery and attempted to drive out the man of God, Basil was patient and predicted, predicted to the prince that all his sons would perish because of the ills done to the monastery. When this prophecy was fulfilled, the prince repented deeply and God gave him new issue. Indefeatable in the auspices in prayer by which he sustained his people, St. Basil entered peacefully into rest in the Lord on the 29th of April, 1671. At the moment of his last breath, an indescribable light filled his cell and then a vine spread it up on the bare rock near the place where he died. Many miracles began to be wrought at his grave and, he, and have never ceased to this day. Seven years after his death, St. Basil appeared in his sleep to the abbot of the monastery of Luke in Zupa, clad in his episcopal vestments and with a censer in his hand, and told him to go and open his grave. While the saint was sensing, pieces of charcoal fell on the abbot, who woke full of fear and left immediately with all his monks for Ostrog. When they opened the grave, they found the saint's body, the color of wax, and giving off fragrance like that of basil. They placed his relics in a reliquary in the church of the presentation of the Mother of God in the temple, where pilgrims were able from that time to venerate it. Just as the saint had never throughout his life known peace, so his holy relics had to be hidden a number of times to escape Turkish despoiling. In 1942, the monastery of Ostrog was bombed, but thanks to the saint's protection, the projectiles fell without damaging the buildings. A shell even landed at the entrance of the saint's cave that had been transformed into a chapel and where his relics were placed, but it did not explode and can still be seen on that spot. St. Basil is one of the most venerated saints among the Serbs. There are very many churches dedicated to him, both in Serbia and abroad. May the Lord God, through the prayers of our Holy Father Basil, Bishop of Ostrog, may the Lord God have mercy on us and save us. Amen. God bless you. We're here for you. We love you dearly. Don't hesitate to reach out. Call us, email us, leave us a message on social media, leave us a note in the comment section. If you'd like to support this ministry, remember to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social media. Again, God bless you, and have a beautiful rest of your day.